Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. We're working on our platformer game and this time we're going to do the game over and add a score. So before we get started, I did make one minor change to last episode's code. Um, I just added a variable here in our settings um, for the power of the player's jump, just to make it easier, again, to have all of these properties grouped together and, and, and set as uh, constants here so you can easily go to one place and change them. So I just changed that and in the player uh, code I just have the jump set to do whatever that number is. Just like we did with the acceleration or the gravity. It makes it a little easier to keep track. Okay, so where we left off is we had a sprite that we could we could jump and we could continue climbing upwards and we could keep going and hopefully our randomly spawned platforms will uh, usually allow us to make the jump. Um, because of the way we're doing the really simplistic collision, uh, all you have to do is just barely hit the platform and you'll be put on top of it, but that's okay for now. Um, again, we didn't want to get too fancy with it right out of the gate. Um, so. But now we have the problem that when we fall off the bottom, uh, nothing really happens. We're now falling you know, forever down into nothingness. Um, so we want that to be the game over condition. So that's going to be really easy to actually do. We just want to say if the player sprite goes, the top of the player sprite goes past the bottom of the screen, then, you know, then that's game over. Uh, but we can do a little better than that. We can give it a little personality. Uh, so I'll go in here into my game update, right, where we're keeping track of whether the player hits a platform or the player reaches the top of the screen. Um, I'm going to make another little block here uh, for if we die. Okay. So if the self.player bottom is greater than height, right, so if we hit the bottom of the screen. Now at the beginning of the game, we've got a platform down there, so we can't hit the bottom of the screen. So hitting the bottom of the screen will be the uh, the game over condition. So we could just say uh, uh, playing equals false here, right? And it would just it would just end uh, kind of like this, but right, we just started over. But uh, we can make a little more interesting reaction here if when we hit the bottom we scroll all of the platforms up so it looks like we're the camera is falling down as well so if we just go through uh, all the sprites and we take the erect and we move it upwards so that means we want to subtract right but how much do we want to subtract well I don't want to do it at a constant speed because it kind of depends on how fast our player is falling, right? If we missed a, a jump way up high, we're going to be falling pretty fast when we hit the bottom. And if we jumped from low, and then our speed won't be as great. So we want to move it at whatever the player's speed is. But that could be too fast. So what I'm going to use the max function, which lets me gives me the maximum of two numbers. Okay, and the reason I want to do that uh, is so that we don't fall too slow for it to be, you know, worth seeing. Um, it's gonna fall. It's gonna pick whatever the max number is between ten and the velocity that we're falling at, okay, and move everything up that amount. And if the bottom of the sprite goes goes off the screen, off the top of the screen, then we can then we can kill it. Okay, and then, and then we can put here that if the length of the platforms is zero, that means we got rid of them all, then it can be game over. Okay, and that'll look a little bit more interesting when we get up here and we've got some platforms on the screen and we die. They kind of shoot up off the screen before we reset and start again. Right, now when we're our goal is that this will, of course, go to the game over screen when we drop off like that, but we'll get to that a little bit later. 
Uh, for now, let's just go ahead and add um, a score quickly uh, before we finish up this video. Um, if you remember, if you followed the shmup video, um, we did a little draw text uh, function to handle all of the, the rendering of text onto the screen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our settings here and I'm also going to add uh, a font name um, just so that we can easily configure it again. So um, you can use any font you might have on your system. Um, just recall that uh, you're going to have an issue with portability, with moving it to other computers if you use a font name that doesn't exist on that computer. Uh, you might not get what you expect. So, so we're going to go over here and in the in the setup here, in the init, we're going to go ahead and get the font um, name from the system that matches uh, as close as possible to that one. So we use the match font function um, and we're going to match that to font name. That way we have the closest match to that name you put in there. So, and then we're going to um, define ourselves a new game method called draw text. And all draw text is going to do is, um, well, it's going to need a couple more parameters, right? We're going to need to know um, what text we want to draw. We're going to need to know uh, the font size, the color, and the X and the Y of where we want to place it. Okay, so. Um, We use the size there to get the font object. We generate a surface to render the font onto. And what we're going to render is the text uh, true for anti-aliasing and the color. And then we will get a rect, uh, generate a rectangle to uh, to help us locate it on the screen. Get wrecked. Okay. Then we need to place it. Now, one option we have here is um, what part of the rectangle we want to use to place the X and the Y. Do we want to use the upper left hand corner? Do we want to use the center? All that kind of thing. And it kind of depends on how you want to lay out your screen. Um, to keep things easy, I'm just going to use mid top here, and that's going to be the middle top of the rectangle. And then we're going to blip that onto the screen. Okay, so, um, and I don't know if you noticed, but I just noticed that I accidentally uh, delete a couple lines there. Okay, um, so to start with, let's just add a score. So we're gonna keep track of how well we're doing in the game. So under def new, so when we initialize a new game, we're gonna set our score equal to zero. And then when do we get points? Well, um, again, to keep things simple for the moment, we know we got higher if, a plat if we pushed platforms down off the bottom and deleted them. So I'm gonna give points there. So we're going to just add 10 to our score whenever we push a platform off, down off the bottom of the screen uh, because we jumped higher. And then we just need to display that on the screen. So if we go to our draw section here, we can use our new draw text function. And our text is just going to be the score. We're just going to show the score. The size we want to use is going to be, let's try uh, 22. For color, I'm going to use uh, white. And then I just want it to be uh, centered with over two at the top of the screen. So we'll do it, say, 15 pixels down. Okay, 
So let's see if that looks like we wanted. Uh, it doesn't because, of course, I forgot here to do PG. There we go. So now we get some points as we jump higher. Okay. So I think we'll stop there for this video, and in the next one we'll use this draw text function that we made uh, to also draw our start and game over screens so we can display the things we want to display on them. Alright, thanks for watching.